Let me hear you say it again. I'm one of them. I am one of them in my own. To my generation today, I am the answer to my nation. I am the solution to my generation today. I am an answer to my nation. Maybe you don't know. I am a solution. To my generation, today I am an answer to my nation. Can we check it again? I am a solution to my generation, today I am an answer to my nation. When a new generation God is raised. I guess we love Jesus. People we love Jesus. When a new Jesus, we are the people we love. Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Hey! Lift your hands. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Yeah. Oh, 
Three, two, one. Good morning. We are live at Trinity Towers, the chair of David, and it's such a beautiful morning. It is the 17th of March, 2024. My name is TK, and I'll be your host this beautiful morning. We've got quite a number of people tripping in already, but for a few minutes, I'll be interacting with you, and I want you to drop your comments in the section. Say hello. Let me know where you're calling from. Tuning in from actually, and of course, um, I want to know what you're grateful for and what your expectations are from today's service. So, what I'm going to be doing pretty much is interacting with you and, of course, keeping you in the loop with what to expect in today's services. But first off, what are you grateful for from the past week and what are your expectations for this week? So, I'm going to start first. Um, I'm grateful for 
unexpected opportunities. I'm grateful for unexpected benefactors. I feel like last week was a week where I had to work like an ant, but definitely eat like an elephant. So many people just reaching out to me and say, you know what, I got a gig for you. So I'm definitely grateful for that. So get across to me, send in your comments. Let me know where you're tuning in for and what you're grateful for, what your expectations are for today's service. But it's time to you know, give you a glimpse of what's going on today. First off, We've got two services. That is the Sunrise service and the Sunshine service. It is themed plugging for this today. And of course, um, it's a service where we have gospel ministers come lead praise and worship, connecting us with God, praising God for who he is, who he was, who is to come, and all the beautiful things that he has done for us since the beginning of 2024. So Sunrise service starts at 8 a.m., while Sunshine service starts at 10.30 a.m. For the first service, which is Sunrise, we're going to have Minister Laolu Benjo ministering. And for Sunrise, Sunshine rather, we're going to have Afe Nathan, that's Minister Afe Nathan, who is also going to be leading us in great praise and worship. So for now, I need you to send in your comments. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Let me know what you're grateful for. Let me know what your expectations are from today's service. So I will be checking out, and of course in a bit I will be talking to Pastor Akan from City of David, and you want to stick around for that, as I can see pretty close, and I'll be asking him just a few questions about today's service, expectations, and a lot more. Okay, so someone says, good morning, I am from Lecky, um, shout out to you, I'm thankful for good health in the past week. Shout out to you. I think of every other thing in life, that's definitely very paramount. It is a miracle to wake up every day healthy. So keep the messages coming. Don't forget, you can get on YouTube, RCCG, City of David, on YouTube. And of course, I would be right here to read your interactions. All right. So I've got Pastor Akan, and I will be talking to him in a few, a few seconds. But keep the messages coming through. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you so much. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. So I'm going to start with every other thing I'm asking everybody first, which is what are you grateful for from the past week? And of course, what your expectations are from today's service. Well, the past week was an awesome week for me. Um, got a lot of uh, testimonies uh, from work, from the home front, from family, uh, my boys, uh, sweets. Uh, so it's a week of testimonies, if I were to summarize it. I'm very expectant that um, we will uh, worship, uh, we will be transformed, and we'll be prepared for the next week ahead. And speaking of praise and worship, how important is that in our connection with God, in our spiritual experience? How important would you say praise and worship is? Hmm. I would say extremely important. Um, I like to describe worship as contact, uh, one of the elements of a contact sport, that when you and I go before the Lord, what transforms us is the contact we make. And um, there are levels of contact. You know, there is casual contact, there is... Uh, intermittent contact and then there's continuous contact and um, depending on what kind of contact we make with God would determine how transformed we are and worship is one of the ways to make persistent contact so that his virtue his grace his help flows into us and we become transformed so that's why I'm looking forward to a wonderful worship experience thank you so much you said continuous contact you said intermittent contact intermittent concerts and another one partial partial Passion contact. So passion, intermittent, and continuous contact. Thank you so much. Do you have any words for people listening? Um, absolutely. I, I really welcome you to, to join us this service. Uh, share the links uh, with anyone who uh, you want to join and be a part of the service. You know, I always say that it is so important for you to share your experience with God so that others can have the same level of uh, liberty, wisdom, grace that you are currently experiencing in your own life. God bless you. God bless you. It's always very impactful talking to you. Thank you so much for coming. All right. So that's it. We have Pastor Akan who shared quite a number of things, especially about your connection with God in relating to praise and worship. I think it's time for me to join the service, but 
as we transmission into today's service, that's two services. We have the sunrise service at 8 a.m. and we have the sunshine service at 10.30 a.m. Don't forget, it is plugging and we are going to be praising and worshiping God. Of course, Minister Laolu Banjo for the first service and Minister Afe Nathan for the second service. So let's carry this energy into the service. Let's open our hearts to receive from God. And most importantly, Let's crave for a deeper connection with God. Let's thank him for what he's done, for the fact that he's kept us alive. And, you know, I hope that every single one of you leaves refreshed and inspired after today's service. This is why I take a vow. God bless you. Of course, we also looked at the dimensions of, you know, worldly socialization and then, of course, biblical socialization. Christians are expected to recreate, but visiting bars and joints and all those kind of things, they are a no-go area for Christians. You should avoid, as a Christian, participating in feasting on occasions where idols are celebrated, watching, you know, immoral movies celebrating satanic carnivals and things like that. 
praise the Lord. Whatever we do, whatever we do in terms of socialization should be to the glory of God and the edification of the saints. So as a follow-up to you know, Christianity and socialization, we are looking at Christianity and governance. Somehow it is even aligning with you know, the spheres of governance that we're talking about, you know, about two lessons ago, the Schembergs, you know, uh, where Christians are expected to actually have, you know, some sort of influence in government, in media, in sports and things like that. Today, Christianity and governance is our lesson. The opinion held by some Christians is that if they are going to follow Christ, they must be quiet and withdrawn from things happening on earth. This opinion negates the will of God as spelled out in the scriptures. We're going to examine it. Christ has called believers onto a life of influence. Christ has called believers onto a life of control. To, they are to take charge. And the issue of governance is not an exception. As the light of the world, they are to dispel the acts of unrighteousness, the darkness of unrighteousness. Christians are to dispel the acts of psychophancy, which are the order of the day in present-day governance systems. Revelations 5 verse 10 is our memory verse. Are we there? Revelations 5 verse 10. Let's open our Bibles. Revelations 5 verse 10. One, two, go. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Once more, and has made unto us, and we shall reign on the earth. Praise the Lord. Who is going to read our Bible passage today? Romans 13 verses 1 to 6. Romans 13, verses 1 to 6. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. So these directives are given to the governed. The responsibilities of those that have been governed. Let every soul be subject unto higher powers. If you resist the higher powers, you are resisting the other. So there are responsibilities that you should have. Really, there's a saying that says that. If the righteous are in power, what happens to the people? They rejoice. But if the unjust are in power, what happens to the people? Uh, so should we be supporting the unjust to be in power? Let's look at some of the you know, things that we have to, that has been outlined for. Let's outline one, the view of God on governance. God instituted governance. It is not a secular concept. God himself instituted it. So many times when Christians are shying away from governance or don't want to participate, the instruction we are giving this morning, the reminder, is that God himself instituted governance. God is the ultimate governor who delegates the function of his governance to humans. God delegates his functions of governance to humans. Psalm 22 verse 8, For the kingdom is the Lord, and he is the governor among we, sir, the nations. Praise the Lord. Daniel 4.34 And I, King Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto heaven. And when his understanding returned to him, he said he blessed the Most High. Praise the Lord. And he said he praised him for his dominion that lasted forever. And his kingdom from generation 
two generations. That was King, King Nebuchadnezzar. So the view of God on governance, he instituted governance, is the ultimate governor. It is one of the purposes for which the spirit man being, the spirit being called man. You know, man is a spirit being. It is one of the purposes for which man was created. Governance. Dominion. Have we not remembered it? Genesis 1 verse 27. And God said, let us have what? Man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have what, sir? Dominion. So why should the Christian yield his dominion? Why should the Christian yield his governance to others that are not believers? No wonder the others that are not Christians, they've taken over. And we're caught napping. Praise the Lord. So, Governance is a calling and is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 28. And God has set some in the church. First, apostles. Second, really, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then, gifts of healings. Helps. Governments. Diversities of tongues. So, if you look at even the way the church is constituted, the body of Christ is constituted, there's also, there's already what? Governance. Governance is a tool for orderliness and sanity. First Corinthians, you know, 14 verse 40. He said, let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. Many times when we're complaining that the governance in some certain nations is not what you expect it to be, it's because some people have shied away from it. Particularly Christians. We're being reminded this morning that it is our duty to be part of governance. Praise the Lord. Governance is instituted by God for administration. Governance is instituted by God for justice. Governance is instituted by God for the general welfare of his citizens. First Timothy verse 2 said, For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all, godly, in all godliness and what's that? Honesty. So we're going back to that same thing. When the people that are not righteous are in authority, are we not discomfited? Are we not in pain? So why, why can't we be part of that governance? Why can't we be part of governance? Like marriage, it is instituted by God and should be submitted to. Romans 13, 1 to 6, that's what the Bible passage we read. You should submit to the government. Really and truly. And Jesus answered, said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar, and to God the things that are God. Mark 12, verse 17. So let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Governance is servanthood. It is a means of serving the government. Of the governed. But because many times the people that are governing us, they lord it over us. But that is not God's order. Governance is servanthood just because jesus admonished us matthew 20 25 to 28 he said but if you are going to be servant if you are going to be ministers whoever should will be great among you should be what sir let him be your servants praise the lord even as the son of man came not to be ministered to but to minister and to give his life as a ransom to many when jesus christ gave his life as a ransom was he lording it over us? No, he even gave himself. Praise the Lord. Governance is a ministry. And governors are ministers of God. Praise the Lord. So what can believers do? Or what do you think government can do to deliver more services to the citizens? Any takers? What can government do to deliver more services to its citizens? Yes, sir. Okay. So one of the things the government can do, or people in government can do to impact the people, is to ensure that we carry out a targeted program that has direct impact to the life of the citizen. I'll give you an instance. Just about a few days ago, in our local government, uh, we are able to empower in commotion for the International Women's Day. We are able to empower about 400 women with 50,000 grants to be able to. Uh, uh, 50,000 right. each to be able to support their programs and to augment their family income to be able to sustain the families, traders. especially the traders. Those are the bottom of the food chain. 
in our local government and we're able to do that in partnership with some critical state, uh, private sector. And uh, unfortunately, as a church, we, are on the, we underestimate our power, mm. our value, our influence. For instance, in this local council, in this local government that we have, nobody should come to governance without the influence of the church. Ideally. Ideally. Unfortunately, we are Nobody sleeping. should come to governance in this sphere, yes, in this local government, the which has the influence, influence of the church. Because the city of David in this area yes. is influential. Absolutely. Redeemed Christian Church of God in this area Absolutely. is influential. So as church, if the local government says today we are not opening, we are not opening. Hmm. That's how much power that we, we that we that, that will, will even in government. So the church will rise up to. How many Christians do vote during the general elections? We've we been encouraged this morning that the church should rise up. Who are the church? When you say church, ecclesia, the assembly of the people, that's what the church is, not the building. Praise the Lord. Let's move very quickly because of our time. Christians should be involved in governance. It is part of our inherent design as believers. As believers, we are designed to be governors. We are designed to be, you know, to, to dominate. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but in a candlestick. Let your light, so what? Shine before man. Matthew 5, 15 to 16. That's what Pastor Taiwo is reminding us. Let your light so shine before man. We are to effect positive and lasting change. And look at the account of Joseph. When there was famine in Egypt, what did he do as a prime minister? Joseph. He saved for the rainy day. And when the famine came to Egypt and the people were crying to Pharaoh, what did Pharaoh say? He said, what? Go and meet Joseph. He will solve your problems. And they said, when there was famine all around, Egypt was what? Spared. Because of Joseph. That's governance. And he was put there by God himself. Praise the Lord. It stands out the nation among other nations. When the Christian is in governance, Righteousness exalted a nation, Proverbs 14, verse 34. But sin is what, sir? A reproach to any people. We shall make righteous laws and decrees that lead to national progress. We keep, we keep going back to that same mantra. When the righteous are what? In authority. The people what? When the wicked hear it through, what happens? Look at the example of Herod, Herod Antipas. When he was having a feast and what have you? And you know, the people, his daughter and all these people were dancing and what have you? And then he said he got drunk. And he said, ask what, ask what you want. And what happened? He said, ask for, because he had imprisoned uh, John the Baptist. He said, he asked for, the wife asked, told the daughter, go and ask for the head of John the Baptist. If he was a righteous man in power, would he first of all have imprisoned John the Baptist? Or would he have even executed John the Baptist? Think about it. And what was John the Baptist's offense to Herod and Tippas? Because he was telling him that your brother's wife that you took as a wife is immoral. And Herod got you know, angry and imprisoned him. When the righteous bear it through, the people rejoice. So it is obeying God's God, God, uh, ordinance of submission to authority. Obeying the ordinance of submission to authority. Submit yourselves to every ordinance. You understand? Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it to be the king as supreme or unto governors. First Peter 2, 13 to 14. When Christians are you know, involved in governance, it brings blessings and breakthroughs to the nation and fulfillment for her citizenry. No wonder. You know, there are some countries, they have God as their mantra, even in their pledge. Even in Nigeria's pledge, don't we have it? Even the president, the current president is saying, any fu public function, recite the pledge. Who knows the pledge? Nigeria's pledge. What's the second stanza? Redirect our noble call. Guide our leaders. Help our youth. In love, the pledge and everything. If Christians recite, it's a prayer. It's a prayer. Some of the greatest nations on the world, they are under God. They were instituted by God. Some people will call a particular country God's own country. Do you know any country that is called God's own country? Hey, why come you are not calling your country 
God's own country? Or how come you don't want to be part of the governance to make Nigeria God's own country? So it's a charge to us this morning. Governance is, the, is God's institution. Governance is the word of God. So people of God should not be kept out of God's institution. Because we have seen that it brings blessings and breakthroughs. We must avoid paying the costly price of bad leadership. We must avoid the costly price of bad leadership. Believers should take their rightful place in deciding the destiny of their nations. The believers must turn the kingdom of this world into the kingdom of our God, which is God's divine mandate for us. Let's pray this morning that I want to be part of the governance of this nation. I want to institute order. I want to institute sanity into the governance of this nation. I want to be part of it because God himself has ordained it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do have a very wonderful Sunday and thank you for coming. Amen. You're welcome. Man.
tribe of Judah, the one that is the reason we live, the one that is the reason we move, the one that is the reason we have our being. Oh, we can of our own do nothing. Lord is the reason that we exist. Let's give him praise. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's give him adoration. Somebody please join me to praise the name of the Lord. Exalt his holy name, exalt his holy name. The Bible says we should count our blessings for the gift of life, for the gift of life. Yes, you can speak with your mouth, you can praise God, your leg can carry your body. Praise, give him thanks. Oh, Father, we bless your name. We are grateful as a church. We are grateful as a church. We are grateful as a church. For your loving kindness, we are grateful. For your mercies, we are grateful. For your faithfulness, we are grateful. For your love, we are grateful. The love that took you to the cross. The love that ensured that we are saved, we are born again. Do we have any born again Christian in the house? He saved my soul. He saved your soul. I appreciate the King of Glory. I appreciate the King of Glory. Glory, honor to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. 
Friday. Isaiah chapter 40, Friday. verse 4 and 5. The Bible says, Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill shall be made low, every crooked shall be made straight, every rough place shall, you know, shall be made plain. And in verse 5, and says, The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. We're going to call upon the Lord. We're going to say the fourth man represents the revelation of Jesus. So in this service, we're going to ask God, reveal yourself to me. Reveal your glory. Show me your glory. Lift up your voice and call upon the Lord. Reveal Jesus in this service today in the name of Jesus. Lord, reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. It doesn't matter what we are going through. Let Jesus be revealed. Let the glory of the Lord be revealed. Lord, please reveal your glory. King of glory, reveal your glory. Ancient of days, reveal your glory. Let Jesus be revealed to me. Let Jesus be revealed through me. In this service today, let Jesus be revealed to me. Let Jesus be revealed through me. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, please let Jesus be revealed to me and let Jesus be revealed through me. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Glory, honor to your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Eternal Rock of Ages, we want to thank you. Faithful Redeemer, we want to bless your name. We ask today, we have come unto you. Let the heavens open over your church in the mighty name of Jesus. Let Jesus be revealed through us and to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, at the end of this service, let our life not remain the same. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Glory, honor to your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. And the one that will first see Jesus in this service this morning, I want you, hallelujah, to be louder than that of your labor. Somebody clap your hands and celebrate the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords, the God who is worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your voice and shout hallelujah. One more time, raise your voice and shout glory. Yeah. Come on. This is real simple, everybody. Hey. Yahweh. 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 Jesus praise. If you know it's this heaven of all the glory, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. One more time, say Yahweh. Yeah. 
worship this great God that we serve. Exalt the name of the Lord. Exalt the name of the Lord. Somebody worship the King of Kings.
rock of ages, the ancient of days, the rose of Sharon, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the king that was, the king that is, the king that will be. Father, glory, honor to your name in the name of Jesus. Unto you we have come this morning. Please visit us with your presence in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens open over us as a church in the mighty name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, we are calling upon you. This morning, let there be salvation of souls. Let there be healing and deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, let there be answers to prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. It is written in your word. You are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can think or ever imagine. Lord, in this service this morning, please exceed our expectations in the name of Jesus. We return our praise to you in advance. Glory, honor to your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. How many of us are happy to see your neighbor in church? Please celebrate your neighbor. Celebrate your neighbor. Say hello to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor how pleased you are to see your neighbor in church. Oh, I'm happy to see you. I'm glad to see you in church. Glory, honor to your name. Glory, honor to your name, Lord. Thank you for my neighbor. Thank you for all the beautiful souls in church. We give you praise. We give you glory in the name of Jesus. Please, I want us to face the camera and also celebrate all our online viewers. Let's, let's celebrate them. Let's tell them, show them that we are happy to see them worship with us today. Praise, 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 praise the Lord. God bless you. Please be kind to have your seat. If it is your birthday, between uh, Monday last week to today, we want to celebrate you. Ah, Pastor. <laughs> okay, let's celebrate them. Happy birthday, Pastor Trial. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Pastor. Happy ah. birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. stretch off our hands to them and begin to pray for them. That the Lord we continue to bless them. That the hands of the Lord we continue to be mighty upon them. That the Lord we give them a birthday present. The both the one that money can buy and the one that money cannot buy. The Lord we cause their joy to be full in the name of Jesus. And this time next year, we will be all alive to celebrate them also in the name of Jesus. They will fulfill their days and fulfill their purpose here on earth in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Glory, honor to your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. It's testimony time. Let's celebrate God. Hallelujah. Our first testimony is from Pastor Oyi Consola uh, Fatuga. Good morning, church. Today, Sunday, 17th March, is my birthday. Hallelujah. Happy birthday, Pastor Oyi I'm here in church alive, physically, emotionally, and mentally well to say thank you to my Redeemer, my Savior, lover of my soul, for all his amazing grace through the years. 
For every mountain he has brought me over, for every trial he has seen me through, for healing me again and again, for all his blessings, I say thank you, Jesus. As long as I have breath in me, I will never stop worshiping and praising my God. To my dear Pastor Idi and Pastor Shiju, I say thank you, sir, thank you, ma, for 30 years of immense love. I am grateful and thankful to God for the precious gift of another birthday in the land of the living, basking in his unconditional love. I don't take this for granted. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. The Lord, you will continue to see the goodness of God in the land of the living, in Jesus' mighty name. Second testimony is from Anonymous. I would like to thank God for provision. Between November 2023 and this March 2024, my, by faith, I decided to invest in, a proper, in properties, and I did so afraid, but knowing God was on my side. I thank God alone because I was able to purchase land worth almost 90 million naira and paid all of them off within six months. Only God alone could have done it. I also want to thank God for good health, for my business growth, and above all, for healing my mom of acute shoulder pain that lasted for a while. I pray affliction will never arise a second time in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, God will continue to take you from glory to glory in Jesus' mighty name. The third testimony is from Pastor Abiyua Osage. Good morning, church. Join me in thanking God for deliverance. My sister in church was kidnapped on her way from Ilori on Wednesday and marched through the bush with the people who were in the bus traveling with her. To God be the glory, she was released on Friday afternoon on hot. All glory be to God. If we want to celebrate Jesus for deliverance, please let's celebrate Jesus for deliverance. Praise the Lord. The fourth testimony is from Olubukola. What a good God of instant miracle. I thank Almighty Father for his unbeatable awesomeness and love. God gave me a new job and I know that he will see me through to succeed and excel outstandingly and also promote me to the greater level above and beyond expectations in Jesus mighty name. I pray that every, everyone expecting from God will be surprised mightily in Jesus mighty name. Amen. I seal my testimony with the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everyone that is trusting God for a job, we key into this testimony and we pray that miraculously God will give you a job that exceeds your expectation in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. The last but not the least testimony, praise the Lord. I am Jassin Abu Salam. I stand before you today with a testimony of God's incredible grace and provision in my life. It's a story of struggle, disappointment, Ultimately, miraculous intervention. Sometimes ago, I decided to take out a loan from a bank using my hard-earned salary as collateral to invest in a business venture. Unfortunately, despite my best effort, the business did not prosper as I have hoped, and I find myself in a deep financial crisis. The bank began taking all my salary to repay the loan, leaving me with nothing to sustain myself. Despite desperate for help, I reached out to my sister and other others for financial assistance, but I was met with rejection and disappointment at every turn. As the weight of my death and the burden of my circumstances grew heavier, I turned to prayer and fasting. I partook, partake in the just completed 50 days of fasting that ended last month, seeking divine intervention and guidance, but nothing to avail. At the end of the period, just when I thought all hope was lost, a long-lost friend whom I had not seen for years, reached out to me despite my previous attempt to contact him being unanswered. He scheduled a meeting with me. During our conversation, he made a remarkable offer to help me with my bank loan, promising to pay the interest monthly until the debt is settled. However, God had an even greater plan in store for me. Only five days later, which was the last, this, which was last, this uh, last Thursday, my friend contacted me once again 
this time offering to pay off the entire remaining balance of the loan to the bank at once, which he did immediately, freeing me from the burden of debt completely. It was a moment of divine intervention that left me in awe of God's provision and faithfulness. Today I stand before you as a living testimony of God's unfailing love and grace. I return all the glory and honor to our Jesus Christ who had my, who had my prayer, saw my struggle, and provided for me in ways I could, have, I could never have imagined. Through this experience, I have learned to trust in God's timing and to never lose faith, even in the darkest of moments. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness and provision in my life. May my my testimony serve as a reminder to all of us that God is always with us, walking behind the scene to bring about miracles in our life. Praise Master Jesus. I key into this and I pray for everyone you know, looking up to God for divine intervention, that miraculously God will intervene in your situation in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's appreciate God. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's clap for those testimonies. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Just um, a break in transmission yes, um, for just about five minutes. Um, we have, um, by special request from Pastor Trevor, he wants to celebrate his wife, his sweetheart. <laughs> let's clap for Jesus. <laughs> and also... Uh, uh, regional elder, uh, we have a regional elder, we have a national elder. Uh, the regional elder, uh, Pastor Bayo Ulusoya, he's sweet at turned 70, amen, uh, last week, but he, they disappeared. But so we, I think we owe them um, to honor them. They've supported us fully. Uh, Pastor Lusman is the regional elder for Region 20 and 51, uh, the Apapa family. So let's clap for Jesus, amen. Um, I'd like uh, Pastor Trevor to go quickly first, then uh, we'll give uh, a minute for Pastor Lusman to serenade his sweetheart, and, um, and then we'll sing the birthday song. Clap for Jesus, amen. Pastor Trevor, over to you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, give him a microphone, please. Just brief, 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 brief. Your sweetheart, it's her birthday today. Ah. Happy birthday, sweetheart. I've said it. Peace. Sweetheart, Eddie Day. Praise the Lord. Pastor, you didn't tell me that. My only motorio. My love. Every time I see you, my heart still skips. <laughs> you are the same when you are asleep, when you are awake, when you are in church, when you are in the kitchen, when you are in the gym, when you are on the bed with me. You are the same. Beautiful inside. Beautiful outside. Consistent. I thank God for your life, and I thank God that you're my wife, and you're my friend. Indeed, I'm always rushing back home because I can't wait to see you every day. Oh, God. And that is the truth. Even when there are parties to go to, at times I say, I don't want to go. I'd rather be with you. Ah. So I love you dearly, and you know it. I will do anything for you. The children know it. And um, I pray that God will continue to keep us together. We'll be for together for long. If the Lord tarries, our love will continue to grow stronger and stronger. And we'll celebrate each other for many, many more years. As we get older, we'll get wiser, stronger, We'll be stronger together. Nothing will separate us. And uh, God will make you fulfill your purpose. And you will fulfill destiny. I love you dearly. I will always love you. Amen. Ah, Let's start for Jesus. Okay. Respond quickly. Is that better? Yes, she has to respond. Yes, quickly. 
my shay. They're asking for song. I don't know how we're doing that one. Glory be. <laughs> my heart throbs. I love you so much. Yeah. You've always been there for me. I don't um, miss anything when I'm with you. You are all I need. <laughs> I love you so much. Thank you for being my support system. <laughs> Thank you for um, all the love you show to me and the children. We love you so much. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's clap for him. Now, this is a big one. Um, Pastor Luswanya, um, can I have the choir? We just um, do a short song so that they can dance forward. Amen. It's a major one. Amen. 70 is major. Um, and if you want to celebrate with them and grow old also, I think you should also uh, be part of this segment. So let's clap for Jesus as we invite them forward. Amen. To um, celebrate 70 years on earth. Choir, do you have a song? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. They will dance forward. Serenade your sweetheart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I told Pastor I did before now. <laughs> do not do this. It is worse, sir. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to tell you with all my of tea. Praise the Lord. I couldn't have wished for a better one. Very submissive. The precious woman talk about the Bible. See her present. Thank you very much. God bless you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I love you. Amen. With all of my heart. Amen. Do you, you have any song? Any love no, song? No, no, no. Not, no, not yet. No. Not now. No. Yes, sir. Okay, ma. Yeah, say some nice things. Yes. I want to thank God for for him. <laughs> for you. I want to thank God for being there since about 50 years ago. <laughs> has been so wonderful. <laughs> he has been so faithful and very committed husband and father. I want to say thank you for being there for me yes. and for every one of us. Thank you, sir. Do you love 
Him? I love him, sir. Okay, so you say, tell him, I love you. <laughs> I love you. Okay. Yeah, and I will continue to love you till eternity. Amen. Now, before we sing the birthday song and pray for you, uh, you are going to do, seal it like they say, okay? So once I say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are elder, we are looking up to you. Whatever you do, there must be effects, amen? And for us to be able to copy you right, when you seal, we must have... So, in the name of the Father, as on your marks, 50 years still going on strong. Don't they look wonderful together? Let's just clap for them, amen, hallelujah. In the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you, Pastor. May the good Lord bless you. And so, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. We bless your holy name. We thank you for your children, most especially your daughter. Thank you for preserving her, O oh Lord, these past 70 years. King of glory, we do not take your grace for granted. We thank you, O oh Lord, even because they are planted in the house of the Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord, for flourishing the house, follow them and overtaking them. King of glory, we thank you, O oh Lord, because this is a milestone year. Father, O oh Lord, we pray that you strengthen them, O oh Lord. Father, O oh Lord, all that they require to continue to live glorious lives, O oh Lord, and lives of impact, O oh Lord, Father, grant to them in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you, Lord, even for those of us they have mentored. King of glory, we pray that their reward, O Lord, we will even multiply in Jesus' mighty name. We soak this family, their children and grandchildren in the blood of Jesus, that no evil will come near them, no weapon fashioned against them shall prosper. You promise us that even the gray hairs will continue to flourish. Father, so let it be concerning them, O Lord. Father, O Lord, we pray that when we hear from them, it will be joy and gladness. They will not die. They will live to continue to declare the good works of God. They will rejoice over their family for good, O oh Lord. Father, please celebrate them. Whatever they require to make their joys full, Father, O oh Lord, grant to them in Jesus' name. Please take sickness away from them. Father, we have had their testimony that they've lived together, O oh Lord, for 50 years. Father, O oh Lord, we pray that you grant them many more glorious years together in good health, in prosperity. Father, we thank you. And as many of us that are celebrating with them, we pray that Shouts of hallelujah and rejoicing will never depart from our tabernacle. Thank you, Juba, for that which you have done. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations, man. Let's clap for Jesus and go back to our seat singing. Amen. Hallelujah. Allahum to to be Allahu Baba. Allahum to. The Lord. So before we take our hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer, we want to do a short summary of uh, Sunday School for today. The topic of today is Christianity and Governance. Okay, Christianity and Governance. Introduction The opinion held by some Christians that if they are going to follow Christ, they must be quiet and withdrawn from things happening on earth negates the will of God as spelled out in the scripture. Christ has called believers onto a life of influence, a life of control and dominion. They are to take charge and the issue of governance is no exception. As the light of the world, they are to dispel the darkness of unrighteousness, psychophancy, etc., which are the order of the day in present day governance system. The text is taken from Romans chapter 3, 1 to 6, and the memory verse from Revelation 5, 10. There are two lessons outlined. The first lesson outlined is the view of God on governance. God instituted governance. It is not a secular concept of people's creation. It was instituted by God. God is the ultimate governor who delegates the function to humans. Okay, and one of the views of God 
about uh, governance is that it is instead by God for administration, for justice, and the general welfare of the citizens. It is, uh, okay, like marriage, it is instead by God and should be submitted to, all right? Governance is a ministry, okay? So we are expected to be part of that ministry, and governors are ministers of God. The second outline says that Christians should be involved in governance. Christian needs to be involved in governance. Why? It is part of our inherent, inherent design as believers. We are to effect positive and lasting changes, okay? So in a democracy like Nigeria, you can't be involved in governance without being involved in politics. So in this outline, we are asking every one of us, you know, to get involved in, go in politics so that we can get involved in governance, so that we can shine the light of God and our nation can be better for it. May the Lord help us to yield to the call in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. And the believers will say better. Amen. Choir. continue to sing to the King of glory in Jesus' name. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory. Oh 
thy pleasure they are and were created thou art worthy thou art worthy O Lord worthy O Lord to receive glory Father in heaven, we pray that our lives will give you glory, that our lives will be profitable for you, that through us you will achieve your objectives on the earth. Thank you, our Father and our God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the name of the Lord. You may be seated. You may be seated. Very quickly, I just want to remind you, you know, in December, our Father and the Lord said, we have become divinely repositioned. How many people have been divinely repositioned here? And then this last month, we started to ride on eagle's wings. Can you ask your neighbor, why were you divinely repositioned? Why, why, why were you divinely repositioned? Well, this morning, just for a few minutes, I want to remind you one of the reasons. You were divinely repositioned for evangelism. Tell your neighbor, you were divinely repositioned for evangelism. Praise the name of the Lord. Very quickly, our text this morning, we we'll take the first one. Acts chapter 8, verses 5 to 8. Acts chapter 8, verses 5 to 8. Very quickly. Praise the name. And then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto these things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Verse 7. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taking with palsies and that were lame were healed. Verse 8. And there was great joy in the city. There will be great joy in your city in the name of Jesus. Philip was a man who was divinely repositioned for evangelism just the same way you and I are. And when he came into the city, there was great joy. There will be great joy around you in the name of Jesus. Great joy in your home in the name of Jesus. John 15, we look at verse 16. John 15, verse 16 says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should do what? Go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he will give to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Evangelism is profitable. So very, for the third, next few days, just want to remind us again about the benefits of evangelism. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, we were created in God's image. That's what he says. We were created in his image. And what did he create us for? To go and have dominion. And to have dominion means to win souls to Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Mark chapter 8 verse 36. Mark chapter 8 verse 36 very quickly this morning. Mark 8 36. Can we give it to us? It says, what shall he profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? My brethren, souls of men is the most important currency in the world. It is the most important currency in the world. And God says that this is important to him. And you can see why it's important to him. When he was leaving, he reminded us that we should do what? Go into the world. And so no matter what you are doing, in the house of God, in business, at home, if you cannot tie it back to winning souls, then, then, then you need to think again. Because this is God at bit. Praise the name of the Lord. We know the exploits of the early church. The Bible tells us in Acts 2.41 that 3,000 souls were added in one day. 3,000 souls were added in one day. Praise the name of the Lord. In Acts chapter 4 verse 4, that number went to 5,000 souls in one day. How many souls have you won in one day? How many souls are you winning? Praise the name of the Lord. And like I said, no matter how beautifully we are dressed, no matter what we are doing, if we cannot tie it back to souls, one way or the other, we are missing something. Ask your neighbor, what are you doing about God's business? What are you doing about God's business? Praise the name of the Lord. So the early church was very passionate 
about soul winning. They were aggressive about soul winning. And we are supposed to be what? Passionate and aggressive about soul winning as well. And that's why we're here this morning. Just to remind us about the things that you and I are supposed to be doing. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Praise the King of glory. Praise the Lord. Every believer must take soul winning seriously. We must keep the fire of soul winning on. Because we know that Jesus tells us in Matthew 28, 19, Go therefore and do what? Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. You need to be asking yourself regularly, how am I contributing to this commission? How am I contributing to God's heartbeat? Praise the name of the Lord. And you know, the truth about it is that God loves people. That's why we're here. John 3, 16. John 3, 16, you know, it says, God so loved the world that he gave all his only begotten Son that whosoever who believe in him shall not perish. God's main objective for saving, the world, for saving us is for us to also go and save people. Jesus came to save the lost. That's praise the name of the Lord. He came to save the Lord and we are all called to the great commission. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Every sinner lost to hell is a cause of pain in heaven. Why? Because we know in the word of God in Luke 15, verse 15, 7 to 10, it says whenever a soul is one, there's rejoicing in heaven. It means that whenever a soul does not come, there's also pain in heaven. How many people want God to be happy? Then you must be involved in evangelism. Please remind yourself, what am I doing to win more souls to the kingdom of God? You know the truth about that time is short. May the soul of our departed brother rest in peace. No, but none of us knew that he was going to go so quickly. The same way none of us knows who's going to go this next week. I pray that we all have long life in the name of Jesus. But only God has the answer. So time is short. Time is short for me and for you. Time is short. Look, even if you're going to live 120 years or 150, time is still short. Because when you turn 60, you look back and say, I'm going to turn 60 very soon. I'm saying, where did the 60 years go? Time is short. Praise the name of the Lord. The other thing is that there's no repentance in the grave. Unfortunately. Once you go, you are gone. But one of the most dangerous things, at one time I, was, I came to give this speech, and Pastor Heidi said, you haven't talked about the most important thing. And the most important thing is that all of us can be accused of having blood in our hands if we don't tell people about Jesus. I will not have blood on my hand. Will you have blood on your hand? Praise the name of the Lord. Maybe you have forgotten. Let me read the scripture to you. Praise the name of the Lord. It's in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 3.18, let's look at it very quickly this morning before I close. Ezekiel 3.18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him no warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. You know, when he says wicked man, it doesn't mean the man is going around cutting people's heads. Anybody who is not born again is wicked. So no matter how good that friend of yours is, how holy, how nice he is, he's very ethical, if he does not know Jesus, he's a wicked man. And the Bible is saying, you and I may have blood on our hand if we don't, you know, I don't like the scripture, but Pastor Eddie says I must always quote it because I always look at myself, do I have blood on my hand? Ask yourself, do I have blood on my hand? God will not let you have blood on your hand at the time he's calling you home in the name of Jesus. So soul winning is extremely important and that's why we are asked to come and remind you every now and then because in the whole scheme of things, it's about winning souls to the kingdom of God. It's about making the kingdom of God popular. It's about bringing the friends of us who do not know Jesus back to Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. It's also very rewarding. John 15, 16, we read it on. But Daniel 12, 3 says, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. How many people want to shine as stars forever? I, I know you want to be. Please. Let us take evangelism seriously. Please, let us take evangelism seriously. There's a lot of noise in the house. This, that, that, that. Our focus should be on Jesus and about soul winning. The other things are distractions. Praise the name of the Lord. Our focus should be, are we winning souls? Is this thing I'm doing and getting involved, is it going to increase the kingdom of God and bring souls? Or is it going to distract people? You will not be accused of distracting people from the house of God in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Finally, just rise up at this morning and just say, Father, I want to be profitable for you. Help me to do better in my evangelism. Father, I want my life to be profitable. I, want to be, I don't want blood on my hand. Help me, Lord, to take evangelism seriously. Help me to take evangelism seriously. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
you are divinely repositioned and you will remain on top in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. That was awesome. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Please be seated for a minute. On the way out, we have tracks. Please make sure that you, um, you know, put some work into what you have heard. We have tracks, so collect the tracks and make sure that all throughout this week, you reach out to people. Um, in the whole of the mission this week is um, evangelism week and weekend. So please, let's take it very, very seriously. Now, this service is um, broken into two. God has uh, admonished us. He's signing souls, very important. But again, because this month is the month of the fourth man, our Lord and Master Jesus Christ, and we believe that at every point, we want him to be involved in our lives, in our endeavors, in our thoughts, in everything that we do. And there are ways of invoking him, bringing him down. And one of the ways of invoking him is through prayer and praise. And so we are connecting uh, the two services and having a plug-in service. And I just want us to focus briefly on Acts 16, 22 to 27. Acts 16, 22 to 27, that is the story of Paul and Silas. We know the story very, very well. They were beaten, their clothes were torn, and they were thrown into the dungeon, the back end of the prison. They were smelly. Uh, of course, you know, um, you can just imagine what a dungeon would be in those days. There would be rats, there would be all kinds of things there. And they were put in stocks. You know, they were limited. Uh, they were chained down. Did all the prisoners had chains. They couldn't move. You know, in that kind of situation, what would you do? Many will murmur, they will cry, they are burdened, no progress. You know, it appears as if no future. Indeed, it is possible that they were appointed to death. Anything could happen the next day. But what did they do? The Bible says that they prayed and praised God. Verse 25 of that scripture, Acts 16, verse 25, it says, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto who? Unto God. It was loud praises so that everybody was around that heard it. So when you are praising God today, when you are worshipping God, please make sure your focus is God. And as they looked unto God, looked away from their pain, their shame, the stench that surrounded their lives, the nakedness, the fact that they were limited, stagnancies, they had unfulfilled dreams, you know, weeping, sorrow, all kinds of things were going on in their lives. What did they do at that point? They did not murmur, they did not curse God, they looked unto God, prayed unto God, and praised God. And once you praise God, what happens? He descends into your situation. It's a principle that we need to understand. That's why the Bible says that in all situations, just give thanks. Thank him. Praise him. It is a spiritual principle that causes him to inhabit our praises. One thing that God loves most is praise. He says, I'm looking for true worshippers that worship me in spirit and in truth. And as they did that, the Bible says that suddenly there was a great earthquake. As we praise God today, there will be a great earthquake. Amen? If you believe that, say, I believe. You know, some people will praise God without expectation. But you must praise God with expectation. Everything you do must be with hope and expectation that as I praise him, he would come into my circumstance. Proverbs 23, 18. Proverbs 23, 18. It says that surely there is an end. There's an end to your sorrow. There's an end to your problems. There's an end to everything that limits us and separates us. It will end today in Jesus' mighty name. And it says your expectation. Another version says expectation and hope. What do you want God to do for you? What do you hope God to do for you? 
What are your expectations? Do you expect to leave this place the same way? The Bible says it doesn't happen unless you have an expectation. So those people must have expectation. But God even surpassed their expectation. He says God came in suddenly. Everything that limited them, that held them bound, the foundational problems, the endemic long-standing problems, they were shattered. And all chains that held them bound were broken asunder. I pray that will be our testimony today in Jesus' my name. So as we praise God, let us praise God with expectation, with hope that God, who says he inhabits our praises, that where two or three of us are gathered, he's there, will come into a situation in Jesus' mighty name. And every expectation of the enemy was cancelled. They were supposed to be dead. Because usually when they throw you into the church, anything can happen. They can come for your head. But God turned it around. People of God, my prayer, and I believe that as many of us are, as are praying and praising God expectantly, you can dance, oh, but don't lose your focus that we are here to praise God. God will enter into your situation and there will be testimonies, there will be miracles, there will be signs, and there will be wonders. And one of the ways to have expectations and praise it is that just set your heart. What do you want God to do for you? What are you expecting God to do this week? And as we connect together and praise God, my prayer is that every one of us will have awesome testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. Psalm 119, 49 to 50. Psalm 119, 49 to 50 is something that you can use. It says, remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. What is that word that you have been believing God for? It says, that word has been my comfort in the days of my affliction. It has given me life. My prayer is that whatever word you are standing on will give you life today in Jesus' mighty name, will come alive today in Jesus' mighty name. So please, the most important things, they prayed unto God, they praised God, and they praised with expectation. And everyone surrounding them had testimony. I pray that as we praise God today, every one of us will have our testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. How many of us are waiting and willing to praise the giver of life, the king of all kings, the man of war, the one who can heal, who can deliver, the one who can bless you beyond your expectations? If you are willing to do that, let's join our own pastor, Laulu Benjo, as he takes us higher. Let's come for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, pastor just scared me. You see, Pastor Laulu. <laughs> Good morning, church. It's a great privilege to be in the finest church in Nigeria. And I'd like to say a big thank you to Pastor Heidi and Pastor Mrs. Shiju Shiju Iluyomadi for making this happen. Glory be to God. Wherever you are, can you lift your hands to the Lord? I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I am grateful. Oh, Lord. How many of you are grateful this morning? Lift your voice and lift your hands. Say, I am grateful. Oh, Lord. For you have done. I want to hear the church say. Come on, personalize it. Say, I am grateful, Lord. Come on, lift your hands. Say, I am grateful, Lord. Everybody say. You are truly grateful. Lift your voice and say, I am grateful for everything you have done. For all you have done. For all you have done. Everybody lift your voice and say, I am grateful. Now, as the church, as the church, as a body, Lift your hands and say, we are grateful. Lift your voice, everybody. We are grateful, Jesus. We are grateful. For everything you've done.
Jesus. Can you think about his goodness, everybody? Say, you have done for me. What will you do? Say, Lift your hands and lift your voice. Raise your heart. Say, Raise your voice. One more time. Say, When I think, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, think about His mercy. Think about His loving kindness. And all he has done. Lift your voice, everybody say, my very soul. Lift your voice and say, Come on, come on. Melo, Melo, Afiki Shama Dube, Ore Rema, Everybody say, I need you to lift your voice and begin to make your boost in the Lord. I need you to open up your mouth and begin to worship the Lord with the fruit of your lips. Tell him, Lord, you are my shelter, my provider, my sponsor, my healer, my defender. Make your boast in your maker. Tell him how wonderful, how marvelous, how great he is. Come on, lift your voice from the bottom of your heart, from the depths of your soul. My healer, my head in times of trouble. Lift your voice, sit your baby. Raise your voice, sit your baby. Oh, Jerry. Yeah, it's a fair 
Lift your hands, everybody. Say, okay. I want to hear the church. Say, come on, raise your voice. Let the host of heaven hear your voice this morning. Think of how many battles you are fight. Think, think of how God fought for you. Say baba oh Eshe Ena na 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 makotoli ara boshi Rekatala bala kotoli ara na na Rehiri kusuko toli brokosha bala Say na 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 mali brokosha we bless you, Jesus. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Raise your voice and shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I need you to help me ask the person standing next to you, do you have a reason to praise God? Is your neighbor saying anything at all? Do you have a reason to praise God? Now ask your neighbor, same reason why he or she wants to praise God this morning. One, if your neighbor is not saying anything, your neighbor is a suspect. So let's go. One, Two, three, four. I'm not hearing anything, no. If your neighbor is not saying anything, change your seats. Four, five, and sorrow. Six, seven, eight, nine. Somebody shouts hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. Everybody say, That's what my song will be.
You are, stay where you are. This one, this one about to do is called celebration praise. Those of you that will come back with your testimony, can I see your hands up? On this island, this land, those of you that will buy your brand new houses, can I see your hands up? Those of you that will get married, can I see your hands up after this service? Look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor, say, Oluwa fia ye mi da bira. Say it like you mean it, say, Baba fia ye mi da bira. For those of you who don't understand what it means, it means God has decorated my life with signs and wonders. It means when people look at you, Kilo Lo, cost so for me now. You go tell them, say, Now God, oh, now he decorates your life with what? With signs and wonders. I wrote this song 2014 for my daughter. My daughter's name is Oluwa Fayemi Dabira. And today we're going to be singing that song. There's an interesting part where we get. Oh, faye me da bira da bira. Oh, faye me da bira da bira. Shama wo me. Okay. In case you have told you that nothing good will come out of your life, some of you they ask you. You go to City of David every Sunday. You will have a reason to show to people. Amen. See what the Lord has done for me. Are you ready now? Say your neighbor, say neighbor, give me space. Say neighbor, give me space. Say neighbor, give me space. Are you ready? Oh, yeah, Baba, oh, fire, me, Dabira, oh. Baba, fire, me, Dabira, oh. Oh, yeah, me, Dabira, Dabira. Oh, fire, me, Dabira, Dabira, Shama, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, Put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air. 
Hallelujah. around you, look for somebody who really look like a testimony. Look for somebody who really look like a testimony. Pastor Shiji, you are looking like a big testimony. You are a big deal. Okay, now. So, you tell somebody next to you. Hello, mama. Tell somebody. If you know their name. Yours. With Jesus on your side. 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 That's all. You're too sweet. You're, you're too, too sweet. sweet. You're too fine. You're too fine. Your face show. Your face show. Your teeth white. Your teeth white. My shoes shine. My shoes shine. Put your hands in the hair. Say, Wood. Say Wood. 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 Are you ready for this one? Now? Are you ready for this one? Now? When I say, Agbara mi mama ko, anu mo mi ga. There you go. I'm too sweet. I'm too fun. I'm too short. I'm too shy. Who do it? Who do it? Who do it? Who do it? Are you ready now? Say your number. Say. Give me space. Give me space. Give me space. One, two, three, four. Agbara mi mama ko. Let's go. I'm so sweet. I'm so fine. I'm so shy. I'm so shy. wherever you are. Lift your hands to Jesus. Lift your hands to the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
of David say hallelujah If you can move, can make your post in the Lord say, You're too faithful. You're too faithful to fail me. Come on, come on. Just make your post in your maker. Make your post in the Lord say, You're too faithful. You're too faithful to disappoint me. Oh, you've proven yourself. You've proven yourself. And of course to realize You're too faithful to fail me On my life you have been faithful oh, no, 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 no. On my life you have been so Of us, sit up there and say, Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, you must see. I see all that I need. Dance has provided. 
provide a lavash. Where is the faithfulness? Oh, thank you for not leaving me to the wishes of my enemy, Lord. Thank you for fighting my battles, Jehovah. Thank you, Father, for fighting our battles for us in this house. Thank you for fighting our battles for us at home. Thank you for fighting our battles for us. Thank you for making the way where there seems to be none. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy. Reko sarabazerebos. Reka la basotori makarebos. Reke kele basotori bole brasotoria. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have worshipped. In Jesus' mighty name we have worshipped. I don't know if you have a prayer for one minute that you want to bring before God because he's here right now. Just for one minute, just ask him and say, Father, have mercy upon me and help me. Have mercy upon me and help me. In your mercy, help me. In your grace, help me. This is a season of mercy and favor. Father, release your mercy and favor upon me. Rima kazoto rima laka seke rimo lobra sende. Reke kaluba suta rima kundo rianda. Thank you, Father. We bless and glorify you. We exalt and magnify your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Still a solemn time. Can I ask you to please sit down for a minute? And just keep on praying. Sit down for a minute. The Lord is here. I don't know if you are here this morning and you have not given your life to Jesus. You need to come out now. This is a very solemn moment. We have listened to the word of God. We have prayed. We have praised. God is here. His presence is here. But Lord, you know, when God is here, two things happen. Mercy comes. But judgment also comes. You are here this morning, all eyes closed, all heads bowed. If you do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, please put up your hand wherever you are. The angels are watching, put up your hand. This is a time for deliverance. Put up your hand if there's such a person. Please, all eyes closed, all heads bowed. If you do not know Jesus, we are waiting for you. Very important for you to come out now. Please raise up your hands wherever you are. Anybody accepting Jesus this morning? Anyone accepting Jesus this morning? We are waiting for you. You are the reason why we're here. Jesus paid a great price at Calvary. He died so that you and I can have a second chance. Are you here this morning? Are you here this morning? Please raise up your hand wherever you are. Anybody accepting Jesus this morning? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Clap for that, brother. Anybody else? We're waiting for you. You are the reason why we're here. God does not want you to go to hell. Hell is real. Please come down. Anybody else? Please come, come, come. We are waiting for you. Very important, we are waiting for you. Don't miss the opportunity. Jesus is in the house. It's a time of mercy. Please come, please come. Oh, thank you, thank you. We are waiting for you. Somebody else needs to come this morning. God is talking at your heart. Oh, yes, nobody is going to put you, there's nothing to be ashamed of. All of us have done this at one time. Can you come right now? Can you come right now? They're going to show you this picture in heaven. Don't miss the opportunity. Please come, please come right now. I'm begging you in the name of Jesus. Rako kalaba soto robo. Rika lobra suto rimo kole braka zinde rimondo. Anybody else, please come this morning. Come this morning. Come now. Don't miss the opportunity. It's a golden opportunity. Your life will never be the same again. Please come right now. We're waiting for you. And if you're online, stand everywhere where you are. We're going to pray and God will answer our prayers this morning. Anybody else? Don't be ashamed. Don't be better to be ashamed actually now here than to be ashamed in heaven. God is real. God is real. Anybody else? We are waiting. Oh, please come, please come, please come. Don't be ashamed. One more minute. Jesus paid the great price for you. Please come this morning. We are begging you in the name of Jesus. Are you here? Not sure of what will happen if you die? Please come right now. Have you lost your way? Done this before, but lost your way? You can also come. 
we want to pray for you. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want to congratulate all of you who have come out this morning. Heaven is rejoicing. Heaven is rejoicing. Are you need to rejoice? Praise the name of the Lord. Are you watching online? Want to give your life to Jesus? Please. It's not too late. Please come. Thank you. Clip, clap for this ones who are coming now. Clap for them. Please don't miss this opportunity. Heaven is waiting. There's rejoicing in heaven when somebody gives their life. Please come. Never too late. Please come. Masuta kalabase keterebo. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want you to say after me, say, Father, thank you for keeping me alive until today. I've heard your word that Jesus, he died for my sins. And I, from now on, I want him to be my Lord, my master. Lord, help me to follow Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm praying for you. Now, Father in heaven, we want to thank you for everyone who's come out this morning and those who are watching online who are giving their life to Jesus. You said in your word that if anybody will believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus is that they are saved. Father, please accept this once in the name of Jesus. Forgive them in the name of Jesus. Deliver them in the name of Jesus. Turn their eyes around for good in the name of Jesus. Give them something to show that you have come into their lives. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please follow them. Please keep capping for them as they go. Keep capping for them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Mercy. Keep clapping, keep clapping. For one soul that comes into the kingdom of God, there is rejoicing in heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to take our body. You know, one of the most amazing parts about the human body is that no part really is Every part of the human body, you know, it's like um, the eye and the kidney, the stomach and the ear, completely different. I mean, if some parts of the stomach were to come in contact with my eye, my eye would literally be destroyed. I mean, when you look, look at bones that you chew and you swallow, what happens to those bones in your, in your bowels? There's acids in your stomach that melt Imagine those acids in your stomach. Completely different. You know, and maybe the only thing that is similar between some of the parts of the body is that the same blood that flowed through my stomach will soon maybe flow through my eye. Maybe that's the only thing that, that is similar. And that's similar also to the body of Christ. That in the body of Christ, we may be different, we may look different, we may dress different, you know, between different denominations. But if the same blood that flows through the first denomination flows through the second, then we are all part of the same body. And, 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 and that tells the story of the city of David in a way. Because the city of David is created by God to fulfill some very specific, deliberate, <laughs> intentional things. I remember joining this assembly about, about 24 years back. And interestingly, at the time when I came into the city of David, corporate Nigeria at that time was known for the occult. Men that were great in Nigeria were men that were vocal about their admiration and alignment, allegiance with different kinds of spiritual systems cultic companies and groups, and they almost evangelized these occultic practices as a testimony for their elevation in corporate Nigeria and in politics. And when I was just thinking about taking the building fund today and I was looking back, I was like, God has changed 
that story. You now find men who have risen to admirable heights in politics, in government, in corporate Nigeria, who are very vocal about their work with God. And some of them are sitting here today. Put your hands together for the Lord. <laughs> and as Brother Benga was leading us a few minutes, many of those men and women came to the front here and danced recklessly. Hallelujah. They did not care whether they were CEOs or chairmen or MDs. They just danced unto the Lord. Put your hands together for yourselves. So God sent corporate Nigeria a tool called the city of David. And here we are today. But is our work done? Have we finished? Because you see that tool began to wield. He fed the poor, went to villages, forgotten villages, in remote areas. And dog boreholes, build schools, and build hospitals. And as of yesterday night, while you were sleeping in your own house, women were giving birth in one of the hospitals you, you built. <laughs> but did some people go home and go to bed hungry yesterday in Nigeria? Did some people sleep without a roof over their heads? Some people still naked without clothes? Is our work finished? No. When a work begins, God gives it an emblem. Like if you build a school, an institution, you give it an emblem. The emblem or the coat of arms, they call it sometimes, usually has certain instruments that depict its intention. You would see an eagle, for example, on an emblem, or horses, isn't it? But will you see stuff like cockroaches? No, you won't see stuff like rats or emblems. The Trinity Towers is just an emblem. Is a reflection of the commissioning of this great assembly. And it is phased. This is the emblem of this phase of our work. When this phase is bigger, there will be a bigger emblem. When this phase is over, there will be a greater emblem. And I want us, for the souls that have come to know Jesus, for the boys, the girls, the men, the women, the leaders that have come to identify with Jesus, the transformation in our society. I want us to complete this emblem so that we can move on to the next one. Amen? We are going to celebrate this Trinity Towers, so we're going to do something different for the next one minute. You will give this with me. You will do this with me. So I'll ask you to stand in a minute. And we will celebrate every mission that has been completed, whether it's the riverbank or the healing stripes or the foundations of this building or the pillars, you can put the list up, or whether it is the bus bar. A few months ago, we we're talking about the, the bus bar. We are going to clap in celebration. Please put the list up, put the list up so that we can conclude. We are going to clap and rejoice for the provision of God that has brought us thus far. And as we thank God for bringing us thus far, God will take us to the very end of this project in the name of Jesus. Whatever is left to be done will be done. Done and dusted. So we can go on to the poor, to the DD, and build even bigger for the Lord. Amen? Remember, we must get this building to tenancy so that the tenants will pay the funds that we can use to continue the real work which is out there waiting for us in the villages, in the hinterlands, in the north, in the east, in the west, in the south, south, all over the country. The need is great and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So rise to your feet. We will call certain things the Lord has helped us to finish and you will just clap and your clap is saying, thank you, Jesus. And then we will bring this phase to an end. Praise the name of the Lord. We have completed the Riverbank School. Amen. We have completed the Healing Stripes Hospital. Amen. We completed the City of David Sanctuary. Amen. We built the bus bars. Amen. What about the foundations of the building? Completed. What about the pillars of the building? Completed. What about the helipad? Completed. What about the walls? All completed. 
What about this beautiful sanctuary? All completed. What about all these? The multimedia, the adjustments, the marble. All completed. Look at the bus bar. All completed. The UPS panels, the cable multimedia. All completed. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. How many of you know that when you thank God for something, it multiplies? Jesus thanked God for two fish and five loaves. And he did what? It multiplied. These gifts will multiply today in Jesus' name. We will complete this phase of the work in the name of Jesus. Don't forget your tithes and your offerings, your gifts to the Lord. Your tithe is 10%. Please don't struggle with it. Don't worry, it will multiply. Your offerings are something that will cost you something. Okay, God has put something in your heart. Please release it in this hour. Don't forget the Arise Women. The Ar when you heard me talk about the village that we took over, we invaded. That was on the backs of our women. Hallelujah. The village has never remained the same. Praise the name of the Lord. Please give. Don't forget the seats as well. The upstairs is still empty and we need to fill it with seats. Some families have given massively. Praise the name of the Lord. Some families have given massively for the, uh, the seats that fill the sanctuary. And I want us to make sure that we do not forget to give the seats. How many of you love your pastor? How many of you love Pastor Eddie? How many of you know that pastor calls people on their birthdays? Are you with me? It's not easy to be a pastor. So if you don't mind, as you prepare your offerings, just join me as we celebrate our beloved Pastor Idi and Pastor Shiju Iliomade. Put your hands together for the Lord as you give your offerings. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we thank you. We bless you for these gifts, these tithes, these offerings. We bless you for the tokens in the hands of your children. Father, as we thank you for all the billions that you have raised through their hands, we ask that mysteriously and miraculously this edifice will be completely built. And we ask that in the name that is above every other name, you will glorify yourself. The purpose for which you have put the city of David together, we fulfill it in perfection in the mighty name of Jesus. The souls committed to our care, these offerings shall bring them through the door. Your name will be magnified. In Jesus' name we pray.
Let's clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated in his wonderful presence. Amen. Hallelujah. And let's celebrate the best choir in the kingdom. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. For just about uh, three, four minutes, uh, I want to invite Pastor Okay to come and talk to us briefly as to how we can improve ourselves. That's what we have. Let's clap for him as he comes forward. Amen. Hallelujah. He's um, from Ryla. Amen. That's, uh, we'll tell you more about it in two, three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for the privilege to be here this morning. I would like to celebrate our father in the house and our mother. Can you put your hands together with me as we celebrate <laughs> Pastor I.D. and Pastor Shiju? Uh, I'd also like to appreciate all the leaders in the house, Pastor Trevor and all the ministers of God. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Lanry Oke, and I'm from the Redeemers International Leadership Academy. I hope uh, the slides are up. We have a few slides just to talk about uh, RILA. Uh, RILA is the leadership training arm of the Redeem. They're not up yet. Okay, I, ha I have just five minutes, uh, so permit me to keep running. I'm sure the technical guys will catch up with us. I'll stay with the intro for about a minute. We're the leadership training arm of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, an extract from the Redeemed Christian Bible College set up by a father in the Lord 29 years ago. Thank you. Because uh, of the vision that he had that the professional side of the church will need more than just the theological training for us to function as leaders in ministry and in the marketplace. So the mission uh, of the academy is to equip leaders with sound biblical principles and godly virtues to fill us with the right knowledge so that we are agents of transformation and ambassadors for Christ in everywhere that we occupy uh, as the man of the union is not a human principle. It's part of what God created us for and you will dominate in Jesus' name. Now, the, the slide you have up tells the different schools that we have in Ryla. Like I said, we've been around for 29 years, and uh, we have well over 4,000 graduates. Or less, you know, including our daddy here, they all have courses, and they teach in Ryla. They impart of what God has placed in them to pass on to the next generation of leaders. We have a regular school that has diplomas, postgraduate diplomas. We have a, a master's program school that teaches transformational leadership and pastoral leadership. And the newest one which I've come to talk about today is the special program school. Now these are what we would call in the professional world, you know, professional courses, short-term courses to equip us to excel in specific areas. Let's go to the next slide, please. We teach in Ryla leadership uh, on seven pillars. We teach uh, self-leadership. We teach family leadership, youth leadership, ministry leadership, marketplace leadership, political leadership, and community leadership. I know Pastor ID teaches a lot about it here. I think we call it the shem bags, which is dominating in all spheres. And we also model this in Ryla. Uh, last year, our Father in the Lord, next slide please, had a vision from the Lord which he shared with us and he said, Redeemed will grow from about 3 million members now to 40 million members within 10 years. And I think the days we used to be amazed by daddy are over now. We know that no matter how humongous whatever he tells us is, once it's from the Lord, it will happen. How many people believe it will happen? we will become 40 million registered members. If you believe it, say a loud amen. Now, he gave us four strategies to make this happen. The first one is he said, we will plant mobile churches. We want to create 400,000 one-star parishes. These are 100-member parishes, and this will be done mainly by our mega parishes, such as City of David. The second pillar is that we will deploy pastoral training. You know, Paul said to Timothy, he said, 
Study to show yourself approved. There's an equipping that prepares you for the assignment. The third is that we will drive evangelism among all our members. And the fourth is that we will recruit and train our youth. Ryla Special Program School speaks to number two and number four directly. Training our pastors and recruiting and training our youth. Let's go to the next slide, please. We have the basic minister's leadership program, which is uh, a training that is set up for all our leaders, mainly our pastors, but also for our senior ministers. Everyone occupying a significant position of leadership. And we say that it's a preparation ground to equip those who are leaders to move either from the first level of leadership to the next, consolidate at that next level of leadership, or to be refreshed at maturing level of leadership. So Bamli has three modules differentiated by experience and by scope of responsibility. So uh, if you sign up for that, based on where you are, we will assign you to the right module and you will be equipped better for what you do. Beyond the classroom training in Bamlip, we will also offer internship programs to enable our emerging leaders activate their knowledge. Next slide, please. One more minute. Thank you, sir. We have the Youth Minister's Leadership Program, YOMLIP, and that is for our youth pastors, youth ministers, or our youth who are in leadership so that, you know, we can equip our youth and insulate them from all the terrible things that pervade the world today. We want to drive excellence in them, fill the void in their hearts with the word of God and his truth, provide them with meaningful livelihood and lifestyle alternatives, and build responsible and competent youth leaders. We also want to provide appropriate structures for them to contribute globally, you know, within ministry in Redeem and even in the marketplace. We also have FAMLIP, next slide please, which is the Family Ministers Leadership Program, to equip our ministers and our elders with the right knowledge to help our marriages succeed. One of the places the enemy attacks us today is in marriages. So pastors and their wives, this course you have to attend with your spouse or senior ministers with tenure and elders who want to be a blessing to the marriages that we have in the church, this is the program for you. It will change the paradigm in the RCCG family counseling ministry. I've talked about the eligibility. Let's go to the next slide. For enrollment, you can go to the parish administrator, you can go to the regional administrator, or you can even reach our RILA representative here in City of David, uh, Pastor Grace on Yerubulem. I'm sure some of us know how you can wave Pastor Grace wherever you are so that they see you. God bless you. So you can, you can go to any one of these people or you can send your name and the particular program you are interested in to enquiries.rila at gmail.com. I take that again. Enquiries.rila at gmail.com. What's my final word on this? The Bible says that wisdom is the essential thing. And it says in all that getting, get understanding. What you know already has brought you this far. But what you will add to your knowledge, to your understanding, is what will take you to the next level. I'd like to thank our father in the house and our mom in the house again, and all the ministers. God bless you all. Have a wonderful afternoon. Let's start for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, as we have the COD news, we'll be out in a minute. Good day, everyone, and newcomers, welcome to the family. It's that time again where we keep you up to speed with the happenings around City of David. My name is Oluwafo Milayo Shomiwa, and this is the COD News. Today, let's begin with a heartwarming recap of last Sunday's Mother's Day celebrations. Here are the highlights and memorable moments from that day. Mama, Mama, you know I love you. Oh, oh you know I love you, Mama. 
Tuesday evenings. Make digging for gold a priority. Join Pastor ID at 6.30 p.m. in the sanctuary as he unveils the hidden depths of the scriptures. Handmaidens, we are still riding the high from Pastor Siju's energizing first visit of the new year. God says, love your neighbor as yourself. So if I came today and I just came in and then I didn't touch somebody or hug somebody, would God be reflected inside of you? Would this show that God knows that I love you? Would you know that I love you if I wasn't dancing or playing with you? You must know that I love you. That is God in you. I could come in and say, hey, she doesn't matter. Please believe everybody matters. Everybody matters. From the one you, there's nobody that is even the least. Because all men are created equal. Let us begin to turn to another sister and tell her, sister, I want to live and lift up my nation, Nigeria. Right thinking, wrong thinking. Absurd thinking, proper thinking. I lift up this country before you. That my Lord, my sister, join me as an intercessor for this land called Nigeria. Lord, hear yeah, my prayer, the prayer of my sister and I as we intercede on behalf of this nation. That it will be well with those in authority over us. That it will be well with our presidents. It will be well with those who are making policies and decisions. Let them not fail. Let them not keep trying. Lord, we pray that today is the day of salvation. Let them hit the right policy. And let them begin to run forward with it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ladies, you don't want to miss the Handmaiden Gathering this Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. Your presence is the missing piece. Here are the rest of our services. Have you heard? Have you heard the big news? It's Dr. Shiju again. That's right. And the big news is the Arise Community Insurance Scheme, a vision of Arise Foundation. And now everyone is dancing. The market woman, the woman on the street, the village folks, the janitor, and the homemaker. There is ecstasy because the change agent, Dr. Shiju Iliomade, has raised the bar again. She gave them primary health care, modern hospitals, access to clean water, modern schools for education and skills development and empowerment academy to put them to work and now their compassion hero wants to touch their life in a different way even when they may not be around arise community insurance scheme the gift of their life the arise community insurance scheme for the vulnerable women in the arise community was greeted with applause with only 15,000 naira annually a contributor can give insurance cover for life or permanent disability to one vulnerable woman and that makes you an Arise partner and a partner can give cover to as many lives as possible. You can make your donations to the account details currently showing on the screen or you may also support the whole community by giving most generously. God bless you as you give. Catch our live stream on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok. And if you're low on data, tune in to the audio live on MixLR. For personal updates, message us on WhatsApp at 0816-733-8464. I want you to take a moment to dwell upon the goodness of God, His grace, and His profound love for you. 
Let that compel you to share your testimony with others. Send it to 0908-569-5537. Revitalize your Sundays with our insightful Sunday School sessions beginning at 7.30 a.m. If you haven't acquired your Sunday School manual, simply make your way downstairs. A treasure trove awaits you. Forge a profound bond with God in 2024. Open Heavens, your daily devotional, available now at our church bookstore. Grab your copy today and make every day a divine experience. Seeking solace or guidance through prayer? Reach out at 080-230-14011. The Axis Bank Trinity Towers branch welcomes you to a world of seamless banking. Whether you're a new or loyal customer, explore a diverse range of banking services crafted to meet your individual and business requirements. Visit us for a banking experience that is not just efficient, but uniquely tailored to you. Download the e-bulletin online by visiting the link shown on the screen. As Psalm 96 verse 3 reminds us, declare his marvelous deeds among the peoples. Let's embody this by sharing the gospel and declaring God's glory to others with the joy it brings. Before you step out, ensure to grab a tract a valuable aid to foster smoother conversations. God bless you. That's right, it's time to turn that gospel music up. Turn the volume up because the gospel music chart is live. Delivering the top five hottest and latest gospel music tunes to lit your mood up. I am absolutely obsessed with today's gospel music playlist. The question is, what are you waiting for? Upgrade that gospel music playlist today. You're welcome. We pull the curtains here. Thank you for your time. I'm Oluwa Fumilayo Shomiwa, and this is the city of David, where the love of God reigns and dreams come true, where legends are born and tomorrow's history is experienced today. Go out there and conquer this week. Praise the Lord. Uh, a couple of quick um, additional announcements. On behalf of our dear pastor, Emeka, and, um, pastor Emeka and his wife and family, Emeka Okide, that is, I would like to announce the transition. Okide to eternal glory at the ripe age of 89 years. We thank God for 89 years. The ongoing ceremonies will take place later this week 
20th and 21st. Uh, details are displayed on the screen. Uh, we are please encouraged to support them with our prayers, with our presence, and of course, with our presence as well. And may the Lord keep us all to a ripe old age. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. As you know, second service uh, starts at 10.30. Uh, the later or the latter shall be greater than the former. We have with us Minister Ife Nathan. We all encourage to stay back and uh, join us to lift up the name of the Lord with our praises and our worship. Amen. Now we want to welcome those who worship you with us for the first time at the city of David, our Trinity Towers. If this is your first time, could you please rise? Please rise. Please rise. Please rise. Thank you. Thank you. Please take your uh, personal belongings and go with the sister, with the brother, with the keep signs. Uh, the members of our hospitality department, uh, they tell you more about the city of David, where the love of God reigns where dreams come true, where legends are born, where tomorrow's history, tomorrow's testimony is experienced today, where the fourth man is fighting all of our battles for us and victory assured in the name of Jesus. As you go, indeed, uh, your victories shall be permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's clap as unto God, unto God, unto God, unto God. Even as we rise to close the service. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for a special service. Thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence. We thank you for your presence and your glory. Thank you for salvation of souls. Thank you for touching lives here today. Father, we've offered a sacrifice of praise. We've worshipped in spirit and in truth. Please accept us. Inhabit our praises. Accept all of our worship. Accept all of our substance in the mighty name of Jesus. And please, please remember us for good in the mighty name of Jesus. In your mercy and your favor, remember us for good in the mighty name of Jesus. And in our lives, be glorified forever in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go, Father, let your presence go with us. Let your presence abide with us throughout this week in the name of Jesus. And let us come back testifying of your mercy and your favor. And please perfect all that concerns your church. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. I share the grace in fellowship. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Second service starts in five minutes.